Well, what David said about me, I'll say about him. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who, this is David Bueller, of course. He has his bachelor's degree from UW Whitewater and a GIS certificate from UW Madison. He's worked himself up career wise from intern to where he is now over the last 10 years. He has been the city of Marshfield's GIS coordinator going on a little over four years. In his spare time, he has fun doing martial arts and medieval reenacting re the Society of Creative Anachronism known as the SCA. David is going to tell you the hard truth about in house development of the geo reporting system. Thank you. Get all hitch attached up here quick. So you may have remembered back at the uh, annual conference, I gave a little lightning talk about how we were developing our own kind of 311 system a little bit, only it's location based. We call it the geo reporting system. Um, so we're going to kind of cover a whole bunch of things, and those really don't mean a whole lot until we get into them. So. Um, why we started down this process. Um, we started down a little over a year ago, and we were looking for alternative methods to interact with citizens, um, other than phone calls. We wanted to provide them ways to help themselves and get it to us quicker, and better details, and things like that. We also aimed to reduce phone calls and having to transfer them, or things like that and uh, formally track how many of these type of things we actually get called on or emailed or people stop in. Um, another mandate kind of from the council was is that we want to be transparent. We want to show that, hey, we're not trying to hide anything. If it's taking three months, it legitimately is taking three months. And there's a process that's making it three months. Um, and accountability, so we can show that, hey, we actually did close it and notify people and things like that. Um, we can use a track progress and then collect usable data so that we can help allocate scarce resources like we're all dealing with. So uh, we were faced with the eternal struggle. Do we do it in-house or do we outsource it? Um, we looked at six different options that are outsourcing it and all of them had different strengths and weaknesses. Um, a lot of them were focused to a specific part of the process or they were overkill for what we needed or things like that. Um, the time, time factor of how fast they could get us up and running versus how much time we would have to putz around figuring out what we wanted. And then cost was a major factor. A lot of them were really expensive and had annual maintenance fees and things like that that weren't just, here's a flat fee for a grand a year. It was like, we're going to jack it up 11% every time or whatever every year. So we did a self-assessment and uh, we have the resources, the time, the scalability, and the cost were all reasonably well compared to the other options. So we went that route. So then we started down the rabbit hole even further. Um, we wanted to leverage our existing GIS infrastructure as much as possible. We're fortunate enough to have an ELA. So we have our enterprise geo databases, as many web servers and servers that we want to spin up. Um, our desktop and ArcGIS online. So we kind of had all the major components that we identified. And then um, we took a look at the local government templates and apps from Esri. And the three that we kind of identified, or I identified was the reporter, the manager, and then collector. And all three of those kind of feed into the overall process um, from start to finish. So then started the meetings you got to have all the user inputs. And we started with a small steering committee of uh, the public works, engineering, and uh, development services is now what they're called. And then all of a sudden it just exploded because the whole city is taking phone calls and dealing with things and how do we want to collect that. So I sat down with pretty much every department and got at least a basic understanding of what things they want to track. Then I did some proof of concepts which all of a sudden I started finding things that were not okay from the Esri templates. So you could do one thing over here, but you couldn't do it over here. So we um, basically I equate it to being at a sub shop and you can get a ham and turkey with lettuce, but over here you can only get the turkey, lettuce, and tomato, but you couldn't get the tomato over here. So um, I started leveraging my account manager 
And if you have a good one, they'll actually like start tracking down people to help you. And then uh, my first contact was with a solution engineer. I don't know if you've ever worked with one before. They're pretty cool, they're pretty knowledgeable. Um, they kind of bridge the gap between the actual people developing and your salespeople that just want to sell you stuff. And they're a little bit more flexible in helping you out. So I basically hounded that guy, uh, Michael Beavers out of Texas, and just bombarded him with questions after questions after questions. Well, finally I wore him down and they started hooking me up with actual developers of the actual templates and stuff. Just an exhaustive amount of meetings. We just kind of went, boo. There's so much, I can't stress planning enough um, and trying to get as many little details out of the, that as you can so that you don't have to redo your work. Because um, once things start to get going, it's kind of hard to change things. So obviously the users just want it to work. They don't care how it works. Um, and it needs to be simple. And if it doesn't work, obviously nobody will use it. Um, we set some loose goals, and as loosely as possible, so that we, if we missed one or didn't miss one, no big deal. Uh, we were also waiting on Esri after leveraging the account manager and solutions engineers. Um, what I found to work with them when meeting with them is if you show an understanding of their products, how to like do relates and talk actual sort of technical, you can bypass your account manager and start hammering on the solution engineers and then they'll get sick of your questions and then hook you up with whatever you need on the back end. Um, the account managers, they're, they're kind of your liaison and your solution engineers will be too. But when you do get to talk to one of the higher ups or the back end shadowy people that you never meet, um, you get about probably 30 minutes with them. So make it count. Um, so we launched our version one back, back in April, um, beginning of May. Um, we started to test it for three months and we had some uh, stopgap things that we knew that weren't going to be the one most wonderful solutions. And um, I also worked with um, an Esri representative out of the local government team. They actually flew her out for a couple days and met with a whole bunch of our departments um, to understand why I wanted to make the changes to their apps, um, which all of a sudden the light bulb went on for them and went, hey, why would you want to do that? And I said, why wouldn't you want to do that? And then all of a sudden it dawned on them when they started talking to the actual people that use it, not just the technical people. Uh, so. One of our biggest kind of flaws in the initial launch was uh, using ArcGIS Collector as kind of the managing component. It's really not meant to be used on your desktop computer, just kind of sitting in the office plunking around. It's not very efficient. So people didn't like it because we're a Windows shop, like probably many of you are. Um, so Windows 10 had some bugs. So we learned a lot of stuff after diving really in. I should have dived deeper into certain departments. Um, brought in the frontline crews a lot sooner than just meeting with like the higher ups. And then uh, don't use collector as your managing component. It's great for field work, but don't use it in the office for this particular workflow. Um, you're not gonna solve everything. We sh I shot for about 80% and then we'll deal with the rest later. Um, some of the improvements, you know, we'll just have to make over time. And honestly, I was too close to the problem to see some of the stuff. So when I started talking with the Esri guys, um, other departments, all of a sudden light bulbs started going on like, hey, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. So I tried to step back as much as I could and, and get the feedback and listen. And honestly, you're not going to please everybody. And I found that out throughout the whole three months is just people hammering on me. So, an old habits die hard. We were finding that people would just, oh, it's, I just email people. Well, that's not what we want. We want to track it so that email doesn't give me the geolocation of that thing so that we can start doing other things with it. Um, the division heads and the department heads, um, they really needed to work together and figure out who's going to take the assignments and the priorities and things like that and assign workers. So we kept it kind of loosey-goosey as here it comes in, you figure out your workflow within your own department, how you want to use it, 
and tried to make it as simple as that. And another thing that we got a lot of complaints about was, or I did, was I want a smartphone. I want to go do this out in the office or out in the field with my work crews. Um, can't stress the get your IT, get on their good side, because we spun up five servers, I think, for this particular thing. Um, because it needs a front end, and then we have one for our geo event processor, and then we have um, just kind of, you need several different, we set it up that way for redundancy, but you can do it with less. Um, it's, geo event processor's kind of touchy. It wasn't necessarily set up for doing intermittent kind of things. It was kind of set up for tracking vehicles and things like that, AVL, but it can handle it because basically it pulls the feature service, sends an email. Well, it kept firing off emails when I didn't want them or things weren't incomplete, things like that. So you got to set up some flags and things to do that. Uh, some other things that I found out is it doesn't really handle doing any sort of unique calculations very well. Um, so I had to devise another way to do like a unique concern ID so that it didn't just explode. We also found out that um, the object IDs have a cool locking mechanism. So you can't really use that as your concern ID because the way it works is when you start an editing, it blocks out a chunk of 400 object IDs. And so if editor one has the first 400, and then it starts at 401, 802, 804, you know, and just explodes. So you're starting to get object IDs that are quite lengthy in this thing. So I don't think the database really cares thus far, but who knows? Um, so then I found out that scripts are my friends because I can automate a majority of the actual calculations and things handled on a slower time schedule than, hey, I want it now. So um, I set up scripts to handle my concern IDs, the reverse geocoding, because that was another thing they wanted was an address. Everything wanted an address. They didn't want to look at a map. They wanted to look at the email that you got from Geo Event Processor and go, oh, okay, I can go to this address. Um, and things that also didn't need to necessarily be there right away could be handled you know, further on down the line on like a weekend when at midnight when nobody cares. And uh, the cooler you are with tech support, the more they'll bend over backwards with you. And they like when you stump them. They found that out. Um, they like doing bug reports and enhancements. So I've logged several of those that will hopefully help everybody else out in the future because I dove so deep under the hood of their stuff. So we kind of had this problem of, do we actually need to change anything in certain workflows? So we had processes that were great, like our um, weeds and snow database. How can you integrate those in? Is it just a notification and then they take and run with it or things like that? Some of the departments didn't really have anything to formally track or to report this, so it, we kind of left it open-ended um, and I got kind of caught up in it would be nice if when if it's not if it's only like one department or one little thing you can you know take make your own choices and so I tried to make everything simple not really annoying but the hardest part that I had to explain is why I want to do a related record or a history of the what happens on that concern it just baffles certain departments that, well, I just write it down. I have a history right here on the log. Well, if I'm over in a different department, somebody calls me, or you get referred, and then you transfer that type of thing, maybe to multiple departments, I can't physically go get that piece of paper all the time. So we tried to, that's one of the hard parts that I found is explaining why you want to do the history. Um, you're gonna get viewed as a bad guy because you're the face of change, and change is scary. <laughs> um, so I try not to take it personally. Um, and I found out that scheduling more one-on-ones, small group training, physically going out and showing them actual, like, here's how you log it. We go back into the office. 
Here's how you're going to manage it. Things like that, that really helped mitigate a lot of my problems. And at some point you're just going to have to cut the umbilical cord and let them run with it and let them fail and then they'll start figuring things out. So we're kind of on version two right now. I'm rolling it out as we kind of speak. Um, I did a survey and that, that was great. I got a lot more feedback than sitting down face to face with people. I don't know if they just didn't want to offend me or you know, I gave them kind of the anonymity and <coughs> let them have at it. So there wasn't any more people and I got some great feedback and we made some changes to the actual structure of the schema and the drop downs and things like that to help try to make it more user friendly for the public. And I've automated, like I said, way more of the process than I ever thought was needed. And then, I can't stress this enough, drop downs are your friends. So get your domain values correct because it sucks when you have to shut things down to change your domain value. Um, so Esri also kept up their end of the deal and they made a whole bunch of cooler changes to their manager app and the reporting app in the September release. So one of our struggles is how do I add like a PDF or a picture back in the office through an easy user interface. So the manager didn't currently prior to that support attaching photos or attaching, creating new related records, but you could do that in collector. Um, so they added that functionality in for us, and it's pretty cool. And um, honestly, tech support can't thank them enough. I mean, they dove down and found all sorts of crazy stuff for me. Um, so yeah, we're kind of rolling it out right now. So any questions, comments, concerns, cool ways of doing things that I didn't think of? What you got? With all your um, interaction with tech support, what do you find to be the most receptive way of Putting in requests, calling them, doing it online? Yeah, I just call them. And then, because I'm generally not just going, how do I turn it on? All of a sudden, they'll start bouncing me between people until I get me the right one. Um, and sometimes I'll go through like three people before I go, well, it could be this issue, but no, your you know, thing wasn't quite this, so let's bump you over to the server team and things like that. So I have had pretty good responses from all of them. So calling works really well. I mean, they're going to call you anyway, especially if you leave them like a really cryptic email. So you might as well just call them and then screen share with them because it's really easy to show them what your problem is. And then they can start going from there. You had to do it over, would you outsource it? <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I don't think they, eh, probably not actually. I mean, it, well, time will tell. A lot of the other options were, we can tie into your system, but then you're stuck with their, whenever they release, whenever they want to change something, and all of a sudden, you know, people start freaking out, so. Are you looking at Workflow Manager as their uh, tools of choice in the future? Not really. Um, I'm not sure I want to train anybody on anything new. I mean, interactive, I mean, it's simple, Here's how you log it, bring up the, the, the uh, reporter app, dun, 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 fires off an email to you. They can go into then manager and go, okay, I found what I need to do, here's my history. Oh, I'm out in the field, let's just close it out, done. I mean, there isn't this big long process and they can manage that internally and I don't want to necessarily set up 10 different departments workflows. So it's pretty loosey goosey, like I said, like it provides a basic level of history and tracking, but if you want to actually go way into like, I need to send this letter and da 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 da, those are pretty well established processes already that we didn't necessarily need to incorporate all at once. So, got a question about it. I've looked in some uh, some things like this, and I've I've, I've became aware of uh, Open three one one, open source okay. three one one applications. Mm -hmm. Curious if you could look at those or if what made you go down the road of, of using. Esri's solution. I didn't want to learn anything new, <laughs> to be honest. Fair like, <laughs> um, the thing that I always run into with open source is I got all of a sudden, there's no really support. There's no, you know, there can be, but 
I'm posting to a forum or I'm, yeah. And I found really great responses and I've already, we already have all the infrastructure that we needed, so we why add to it, mm -hmm. so. With the Geo event processor and the hindsight being 2020, would you go down that path again? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's got its uses. Um, it works really well for like really simple things. So like we have a taxi complaint system that runs pretty much the same way and it works flawlessly. It's like do 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 and send done. So that one's a little less complicated, but I'm getting more into it and diving down to be, you know, figuring it out. A lot of it has to do with setting up flags so that it doesn't pull the wrong thing. So, I don't know. It's it has more uses than just this, and I'm not sure if it is the right or not. Time will tell.